grab your popcorn, kick back and relax because it's time for some more carnage. In today's video, we got an, the second part to our shock bomb guide. You guys were asking me for this the moment you watched my shock bomb guide and that is how to time multiple shocks perfectly because a lot of the time you're going to be dropping more than one and I did give you guys the basic knowledge to do this yourselves but um, you guys were still asking me to do this so I felt like I would make a video on dropping multiple shocks hopefully this doesn't go for too long I'm hoping it's only about six minutes or so so hopefully that's I stick I stick true to that um, before I jump we jump into it though um, wanted to answer a quick few questions that you guys had towards the first part of this guide um, the first one is is with uh, placement the I had three shock bomb locations. I had my first, second, and third shock. The first one was supposed to be extremely easy. Um, it was showing the, a really easy distance where it was guaranteed to get everything. The second shock bomb location was supposed to be impossible, and I placed them in order for that to happen. In the exact grid square locations and all of that. You guys pointed out though that one of the corners of the shock bomb actually looked like it was touching one of the buildings and you guys wanted to know why that didn't register as being shocked. The, the reason for that is because the outline of a shock bomb is actually, that's not 100% accurate towards the shock bomb itself. I've always felt like a part of the very edge of that outline is just graphical, it's not actually, it's not actually there. If that makes any sense. So that's why that's the case. And perhaps the most asked question about that guide was the third cluster of buildings. You guys wanted to know why I didn't space it out a bit more. The reason for that is if I had spaced it out any more, I wouldn't have been able to shock everything at the same time. And the whole purpose of that cluster of buildings was... I wanted to show you guys exactly how many buildings you could shock at once. That's both vertically and horizontally and diagonally at the same time. So that means if you guys get into a situation where you want to get buildings in within that range, you guys can see that. So anyway, that's all the questions answered. Now let's jump into the guide. Okay guys, so to time your your shock bombs perfectly and I have done, I have shown you guys where the timer has to be for individual shock bombs in my first the first part to this guide. Uh, but if you want to time a lot of shock bombs perfectly, there's a few things you need to know. The first is where that timer has to be to get each one perfect. And I gave you that information in part one, so if you need help with that, I suggest you go back to the part one again and watch that again. Um, but in general, what you want to do is, you guys can see where the beach is, right? And you guys can see where the end of the base is, right up the top here. Uh, right up here, right? Going from top to bottom, which is called vertical, uh, you want to place your shock bombs furthest away from the beach, first. And then each shock bomb location you're going to be placing going towards the beach, right? You'll notice there's spots like say if I wanted to shock these three cannons on the right here near the beach and then this shock blaster, right? Because that's horizontally in the same spot, I need to use multiple fingers to drop both of those shock bombs at the same time in order to have that perfectly timed. Whereas if I wanted to drop one shock bomb at each location, so maybe the rockets up the top, the two cannons next to each other underneath it, and then the shock blaster, and those were the only three locations I wanted to shock, I could do that with one finger, providing I was quick enough to drop it at the right time. Uh, so yeah, that's a little tip. I used two index fingers on both of my hands when I need to drop more than one shock at the same time. Dropping multiple shocks and getting it perfectly timed isn't something you can just 
jump into it and do it. You need to practice it a fair bit, especially on operations. And what I do to help practice is I have a second account here, and I literally just have lots of ice statues on it. Uh, basically, it's a turtle account, is what it is. And I use it to get lots of intel so I can practice on these sort of uh, fake operations so I can get my timing a little better. And that's really all I use it for. So, let's watch this attack, and I'm going to show you guys my shock bomb locations. It's going to be this rocket, up the top, the two cannons, and then I'm going to drop two horizontally, one on the shock blaster, one on the three cannons. And, you guys can see, because I know the timing on each one, I literally go from the furthest away first, then closer towards the beach, using my, my two fingers as I need to, so... Uh, we'll see how well I do this. Uh, alright, just, you seen the pink flash there for the two rockets. And, boom. So, you guys can see that the timers on these shocks, the two rockets, the timer on that's a little further in front. So you guys can see, I dropped that a tad earlier than what I should have. But for the most part, these other three... The timers on those are pretty much spot on, so those other three were timed perfectly. Um, so yeah, so hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, I hope it's helped. Dropping multiple shocks, as I said, it's just practice, 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 and getting those timers right. So hopefully this has been a good follow up to the part one. I know you guys were asking me to show you how to do this. Of course, there's multiple ways that will you'll find more comfortable. Everyone will have a different way that they'll feel more comfortable doing it. Um, but as long as you're going from the furthest away to the closest, and you're doing it with the same sort of style as I am, it should be the same for you. It's really just about finding what fingers are going to be most comfortable for you to use, how far zoomed out you've got to be to do it, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, hopefully this video's been helpful for you guys. Um, I apologize if I rambled on a little bit more than what I should have. But hopefully this has helped at least a couple of you guys. And I'll see you in the next one.